So now let's return to that not guilty verdict on John Terry and look in more depth at the whole background. Racial incidents in football are not a new phenomenon. Young black players breaking into the game in the 1970s and 80s, like Nottingham Forest's Viv Anderson and Liverpool's John Barnes, had to endure monkey chants and bananas being thrown onto pitches. So the Kick Racism Out of Football campaign was launched in 1993 by the Commission for Racial Equality and the Professional Footballers Association. It's grown in influence and effectiveness, but arguably hasn't achieved its goal. As well as the Terry Ferdinand encounter, last season also saw Liverpool's Luis Suarez fined £40,000 and banned for eight games by the Football Association for racially abusing Manchester United's Patrice Evra. Well, we're joined now by Paul Mortimer, a former professional footballer who now works to educate children about racism. Natasha Henry, she's the sports reporter for The Voice newspaper and the sports news correspondent for The Times, Ashling O'Connor. Ashling O'Connor, uh, where do you think we are looking at the fact that the language is accepted as having happened, but Terry's found not guilty? Is the mere fact that the language is in play any kind of indication of where we are in race and football? The industrial language, I guess we might have heard on the uh, factory shop floors around the country, that doesn't excuse it being said. And these uh, footballers are, are in the limelight like ordinary workers aren't. So they have a responsibility above and beyond um, an ordinary person. I think the FA now has a really big, the Football Association has a big call to make about what they do with this case, how they take it forward. Because as John Terry has admitted to saying these words, has he brought the game into disrepute? I would say yes, so how are they going to deal with him? And Because, like or, or, or not, he's a role model for youth in this country. Paul Mortimer, if, we, if one's looking at this journey from a really very racist past in football, how far along the road do you think this case tells us we've reached? Um, I think we've come a long way from the 70s, without a doubt. And, you know, I speak to a lot of, lot of ex-players who, who've told me lots about it, and we have moved on. This just tells us that we've still got work to do. Just when we think we may have cracked it a bit, we realise there's a lot of work left to do. And what about Ashling's point that you could have heard this language on any shop floor in any factory? I'm not so certain about that. I've never worked on a shop floor <laughs> in a factory. I can only tell you, as an ex-player, that type of language I did hear, I have heard before. Um, some of my friends tell me it hasn't really been happening as much, but... These cases, Luis Suarez's case, tells you that it's still there and we've still got to deal with it. And, you know, it's time to, to step up. The FA have got work to do now. Um, I, things like this do us a favour too because they help us to educate people. Um, I go into schools and this is a hot topic amongst the years seven, eight and nines. They talk about it. They ask questions about it. They know what it's about. So it's hugely important at the top that they no show some leadership. what it's about, but what's their attitude? They, they sort of... They, the, um, Let's just say if they're Chelsea fans, they'll back John Terry. But what we try to do is explain to them what the words mean, why they're unacceptable, why it's things that shouldn't happen. Um, Natasha, is football a comfortable place for a black woman? Honestly, no. But I do believe I'm setting an example and the more people that are not the, the preconceived view of people involved in football, the easier it will become. I mean, do you, from your experience of watching it, and you're often in the, in the crowd, because of course you're in the press box, but you can get a sense of the crowd, do, 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 you, do you feel it is a place with racial tensions? Of course it is. I, I do believe we've come far from the 70s and 80s and even the 90s, but I, I don't think we've come as far as we believe we have. I think the, the racial tension is still there. Do, do you identify with that as a white woman? I think that, I mean, there's, there's a, there are a lot of issues with football. They still haven't... Football as a game hasn't dealt with a lot of issues. Homophobia for one, mm. sexism for another. Racism is another one that, as this has shown, under the surface, perhaps those, those views still do exist, even though the authorities mm. would like to project a cleaner image. Mm. The problem is that so much is picked up on the pitch now with many more mics and cameras that they're, they're going to have to be... This kind of banter can't just be dismissed as banter. And um, the problem is that football, I think, realises it's in their own interests because actually the number of um, black and ethno ethnic minority people that go to games is higher than in the general population. I think it's about 11% of Premier League fans are black or ethnic minority. So it's in their interests to try and to clean up the game because they want 
uh, black people to engage with the game as consumers, not only as the entertainers on the pitch, and mm. also to give them decisions in, in decision making. And when right. we get the first black Premier League manager, that will be a, a, a massive breakthrough. Now we have a, a tension between whether you just want this case over. I mean, heaven, we're all sick of reading about it and hearing about it. And then at the same time, the fact the FA is now going to hold a very considerable inquiry into it. Uh, what are you, where are you on that? I mean, would we like to shut this down and get on with it? Or do you actually see the FA as capable of having a kind of serious and perhaps meaningful judgment on it? Um, I will go back to what Ashlyn said. We have had a black Premier League manager in Paul Lintz at Blackburn, although it didn't last as long as many felt he should have done. But that's another conversation for another day. Um, I think the FA have to intervene. The FA, the PFA, FIFA, UEFA. You have I... confidence in all those? Um... Come on, you're telling me to get them to intervene, <laughs> so uh, you must believe in them. It's... Not a case, possibly, that I, I believe in them, but they have a responsibility mm -hmm. because they are the bodies that represent mm. the players and the fans and everyone that loves football and everyone that's involved in football. Do you think, uh, Paul Mortimer, that actually the legal case may have weakened the FA's hand? Or do, does the fact that the magistrate exists, uh, accepts that the language exists, yeah. helps them? Uh, no, because I think the FA have different rules and different regulations and different standards. Again, it's is this language acceptable on the football pitch? Um, players are seen as role models and so have to sort of behave themselves and have to conduct themselves correctly um, because they're examples. Mm. So the FA will look at it that way and basically, is this language allowed? Is it acceptable? Well, strangely enough, I mean, you see, the, the whole dispute was whether Anton Ferdinand heard it and he didn't, obviously. So he I didn't, don't think he that's didn't So he, in a sense, wasn't the victim. The victim, surely, was the crowd. This was uttered on a pitch and was offensive to many people in the crowd. That's exactly right. And if you look at the, um, in the, the Lord McPherson report, when it, it spoke about reporting r racist incidents, anyone, anyone who, who hears it and is offended by it can, can report it, which is what happens. And it should be investigated, which it was, um, and it has to be dealt with correctly. Do you think um, this case will in some way represent a kind of benchmark, a kind of moment when we will say, well, that, that's unacceptable, we're going to move forward, or well, it'll it might, just consolidate it? Well, it might be the wrong benchmark, because actually this case has said, you can say it and say, I said it, but I didn't really mean yeah, it. I didn't mean it. And is that, that might be a precedent that, that, that the sport's got to deal with. But um, I hope, I mean, hopefully it will show uh, it'll show the world that I mean this can't this thing can't be kind of repeated in such I mean, no one wants to go through this again it was unedifying for everyone involved really no one really came out of it a winner Natasha um, I think the point we need to make is that those three words that John Terry admitted to saying in that sequence are not acceptable whether they were said out of context whether they were meant those three words are offensive to a certain percent of the population I think regardless of what the court says he's been found not guilty, fair enough, and regardless of what the FA and the football body said, those three words are not acceptable and we need to admit that. Natasha Henry, Paul Mortimer, Ashley O'Connor, thank you very much indeed for coming in. Cathy.